Hey guys, hope you're doing well today. Hope you're not too confused going through all the articles online and trying to figure out what is a PID controller. But today we're gonna to explain to you exactly what a PID controller is. And hopefully by the end of the video, you might even be able to tune one. A PID controller is used in a lot of different industries and its basic purpose is just to control something. Let's use an example of a vehicle. Your vehicle has cruise control. That cruise control needs to know how far do I push the pedal to bring the vehicle up to the speed that I want without going too fast or without never reaching the speed. If you just had a simple math equation that said for 70 kilometers an hour or miles an hour if you're in the US, put the throttle at 50%. That would be great maybe on a flat road. But once it reached 70, if your throttle stayed at 50%, you might actually go past 70 to 80 to 90 to 100. Or let's say you were going up a hill and it put it, the throttle to 50%. You may never reach 70 kilometers an hour. So how do we tell the controller, okay, if we don't know exactly what place to put the throttle, how do you know where to put it? So somebody developed something called a PID or Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. It has three functions to it that all affect the throttle position to almost guarantee that you're gonna reach that desired speed. The first one we're gonna talk about is the P or the proportional, and that's your first initial reaction. So let's see it here on the simulator software. By the way, if you guys want the simulator software that I'm using in today's video, you can get it from the Microsoft Store under PID Simulator by ETCO. It's a great tool, you can practice at home, anybody can download it, you can use it for teaching or learning. And you can practice without actually wrecking the machine or the piece of equipment that you're working on in real time. So if we just have a proportional value, let's set our proportional to 100. The proportional value is the very initial reaction of the controller. So it says, okay, here is my set point. In this case, our set point is 1,000, but you can call it 100 kilometers an hour. You can call your set point whatever you want. Uh, if you're talking about a vehicle, it could even be a temperature if you're talking about a PID controller for a temperature control loop. But in this example, these numbers are a little bit arbitrary on the simulator just to help everybody be able to tune. Uh, the set point is 1,000. The actual value was zero. So the error is going to be a thousand. The proportional multiplies the P gain of the proportional by the error and then tells the output how much output to have. So you'll notice initially the proportional caused the output, the green line to go very high, but then as the actual value got closer, the error became less. So the proportional's multiplica multiplication factor on the output became less. And then the proportional caused the output to come down a bit. Now, if you notice here, our actual value never actually reached the set point. And that's because a proportional is a little low. So if we put a higher proportional value, say 500, now what you see is that initial reaction of the multiplication factor on the error of the proportional is able to bring the output high enough that it causes our actual value to come and reach our set point, but then back off slightly. So this is a good starting place for a proportional value. Next, we have the integral value, because this is an example of putting a throttle to a position, but never actually reaching the speed. So the integral value, it is a very slow reaction in the beginning, because it's the same thing, it's the integral gain multiplied by your error or your deviation from what is my actual value or what is my speed and what is my set point. The integral multiplies the integral gain by that multiplied by the amount of time it's been since your actual value has not reached your set point. The benefit of that is the longer it takes for your actual value to reach the set point, the more compounding output the integral puts on the output. So if it starts at 1% of throttle, 
then 2%, then 4%, then 8% until your actual value reaches your set point. So the integral helps us to ensure we're gonna actually reach that set point. So if we set the integral to five to start, notice the actual value starts increasing up, but it's quite slow. So we need a bit of a higher integral. Let's say 50. All right, that's much better. Now we see the actual value is increasing up to the set point, okay. So we know the proportional was that initial reaction. The integral is the compounding reaction over time or effect on the output, say your throttle valve in this case. What does the derivative do? So if we reset this, we have our PI controller. There's also something called the PI controller. Most temperature control loops actually only use P and I. They don't even use D. The derivative is meant to take this initial overshoot or undershoot and pull it back to stop it from overshooting as much. If you have too much of a D value, it actually pulls back too much on the controller and makes it unstable. So the D value is the last one that you wanna tune or the last one to look at. And if you're not sure, it can always be set to zero. So anyway, the derivative value or the D, what it looks at is how fast is my output reaching my set point. And if it sees that ramp is really steep or really fast, then the D is gonna start pulling back on your output to limit that actual value from overshooting the line. So let's see that in action. Let's set a D value of 10. Now notice how much we overshot here. When we reset this, the overshooting is a little bit less, but not a lot. So let's try that again with a value like 50. Now the overshooting is much less. Now we can go higher, but the problem is too high of a D value can actually cause uh, some unstable controller. So what I would recommend, if you wanna limit this last bit of overshoot, we can reduce our proportional a little bit because that is quite a big initial reaction. It puts our output right to 100 and it holds it there for a while. So let's bring the proportional back down. And I think the derivative might be a little bit too high for this. And there. Now we have a fast acting controller. The P or the proportional gives your initial reaction. The I or the integral made sure that we actually reached the set point. We didn't stay far below it. And the D or the derivative helped prevent us from overshooting too much. Hopefully now you understand what a PID controller does. It uses these three values together to control your output. If that's your throttle valve, if that's your boiler for a temperature control loop, whatever it is, these three values control the output so you can always reach your set point. And if that set point changes, say you wanna control a process from 1,000 down to 750, those three P, I, and D values work together to control your output to bring your set point down to exactly where you wanna be. It's a great controller. And if you guys wanna learn how to tune one, check out our other videos. We have some great videos on tuning PID controllers. And if you want this software that I'm using, again, it's from the Microsoft Store, PID Simulator Software. We also have a website with some great articles, pidexplain.com. Thanks guys.